And welcome back to Mechanical Systems Design. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to analyze parts manufactured by 3D printing. And with every manufacturing process, there are some shapes it'll be good at making and some that it won't. And with 3D printing, it's really good at making solid shells with porous infill that maybe has complicated geometry. Modeling the shell, no problem, but modeling the infill can be tricky. So there are a few approaches uh, that we can use here. One is to make solid parts. So if you set the bottom and top and wall thicknesses all to be really high compared to the overall geometry, then we'll print solid parts. All of our tools will apply straightforwardly, no problem. And that's especially good if we have a, a feature or component that's under axial tension, where all you really care about is the cross-sectional area. Now, if we have components where we uh, expect them to undergo bending or torsion, or maybe we're worried about buckling, then we will care about the uh, area moment of inertia of the cross section. We may want it to be big while maintaining a smaller total area uh, so we keep the mass down. In those cases, you might plan to print your part with low volume infill and then analyze it as if there was no infill, just model it as hollow. And our analytical tools are straightforward, you know, the area moments of inertia for rectangular tubes and square tubes and, and circular tubes, those are, you can all find those in a lookup table. We have some in the tip sheet. Um, and modeling it in CAD then is, is also straightforward. We can shell our component for stress analysis and buckling analysis. And in a moment, I'll give you an example of how to do that. It's also possible to try to model the info. Let's say that you won't have very little or a solid part. You've got 50% info or something. You can try to modify your hand analysis, say with the scaling factor, if you have 50% infill, maybe you expect the stress to be twice as high as what you came up with uh, hand analysis. Uh, you could also try to model the infill itself in CAD, although that can get a little complicated. Um, I don't generally recommend this approach because it can, your, your, your approximations uh, through hand analysis may not be very accurate. Modeling this stuff in CAD, can introduce stress concentrations and it can take a long time to generate results. So uh, of course you can do this, but if you do take this approach, expect it to take a little longer and you'll probably need to run some empirical tests to validate your analytical approach. Okay, so let's do a quick example of how to analyze one of our components as hollow using SOLIDWORKS. So first, we're gonna model our part here in SOLIDWORKS. If you're feeling aces about modeling, you can skip ahead to the shelling step. Um, now I'm gonna set the units to millimeters because that's consistent with what we'll see in Cura for setting up our prints. And I want to uh, make some choices on that basis. Uh, let's choose the front plane, uh, make a, a, a new sketch. And we're gonna draw something that's similar to the T component we used in some of our free body diagram analyses. Uh, this time we'll have three holes. Uh, one, the two top holes will be for support and the, the bottom hole will be for loading. And I'm gonna use a four construction line here, uh, a couple of four construction lines to try to set up uh, these holes with desirable locations. So I'll select this line and this endpoint, and I'm going to choose midpoint there. Now these top holes will be centered on the bottom hole. Then I'm going to start dimensioning, and I'll set this to be 4.4 millimeters. Oh, well, that's complicated. Let's just make it four millimeters. And I'll set this to also be four millimeters. This we can make four millimeters. And let's make the length of this vertical section here 40 millimeters. And the length, the distance between those two top holes, let's set that to be 20 millimeters. All right. And now I'm gonna create a, a boundary around these. So I'll select my line tool, not for construction this time. I'm gonna click and drag to create this line section segment. Same thing here, same thing here. Uh, oh, let's, let's make these connected. And 
there we have the, the sides of that vertical section. Now I'm gonna use the uh, tangent arc tool. There's a bunch of different arc tools you can use. Um, if you push, push that little down pointing arrow, you can select one. Let's choose tangent arc. And we're gonna make, um, oh, I missed there. We'll, we'll see how to fix that in a second. These, um, we'll capture these uh, holes with some concentric arcs that we want to be tangent to each of these line segments. Now this one isn't automatically uh, set to be tangent. So I'll select both and make tangent. Same thing here. Oh, no, that's already automatically created uh, a tangent constraint. Uh, this point was supposed to be connected, but wasn't. So let's uh, shift select both and then merge them. That will bring them together. That's, that's what we'd like. And let's make these two lines tangent. All right, so now we have those relationships more or less the way we'd like them. Uh, now I'd like this hole to be centered, excuse me, this uh, external arc to be centered on this hole. Let's make it concentric. And we can do the same thing here. We get some exciting new geometry up there. We'll fix that in a moment. And we'd like this also to be concentric. All right. Now let's uh, set some key dimensions. I would like the distance between the hole and this outer edge of the arc to be an integer multiple of the line width. And the, the print settings I plan to use will have a line width of 0 0.4 millimeters. So if I set this to be two millimeters, then that will be five lines around the edge of this hole. And you notice how I've dimensioned it is from the edge of the hole to the edge of the outer surface so that I can set what I really care about. And let's do the same thing for this bit of material down here. Select the hole, then the arc. Make sure that the leads are um, indicating the displacement that we're interested in and set that to two millimeters. All right, everything looks good. Uh, let's do one last little thing here, which is I've got these sharp internal corners. Let's add a sketch fillet on those. I'll select these two points. And oh, I see. I'm going to need to reduce the radius first. And then we'll be able to select those points. And that's going to create a fillet for us. All right. Everything looks pretty good. So now. Let's extrude this. And I see, so this is, this is gonna be eight millimeters wide. Let's extrude it to be eight millimeters deep as well, just to keep everything easy to understand. In real life, we would have done some back of the envelope analysis to figure out what we wanted the dimensions to be. Okay, so now we have our part and you can see that this is a, we've made a solid component, but when we print it, we expect the interior to be uh, mostly empty with a little bit of infill. We'll need some infill because we need uh, that top uh, section of the, the wall to be supported when it's uh, built across. So we'll at least, at least need a little bit of infill to support that. And a little bit of infill will also just keep everything well aligned and make things a bit stronger, making our CAD FEA estimates a bit of a, a conservative estimate of stress and buckling. All right, so, but we'd like to now turn this into a hollow part. So what we'll do is uh, select one face here and we're gonna come up to the uh, shell tool. You can see it there and we'll click on that. And then we get to choose a couple of things. So we're gonna choose the thickness of the walls of our component. And let's start by making the walls two millimeters thick. And I'm gonna show a preview here to make sure that uh, things are uh, coming out the way I expect. And you can see here, this is the complicated hole that's gonna be made so that the part is a, a shell with um, sections that are, wall sections that are two millimeters thick. Let's say, okay. And all right, we've got our hole, the part is hollow. Now we have a, one last thing to, to fix here, which is that we also expect there to be 
um, a solid surface on this face. So let's use some quick CAD tricks to add that back in. If we select that surface and say sketch, create a sketch. And then while that's still selected, let's convert entities. And you can see that it takes all of the edges on the outside of that face and makes them lines, which is just what we'd like. We also would like, however, to uh, keep these holes. So let's select each of these and convert entities again. And then we're going to extrude features, extruded boss base. Uh, we'd, we'd like it to go just to a certain distance and that distance should be two millimeters so that we're only getting that surface on the uh, on that top face. And everything looks good in preview. So let's hit that green check mark. And if we uh, go to a wireframe mode with hidden lines visible, you can see now we have a hollow component with that exciting little pocket in there. And that's going to save a lot of mass and it will make our component better match what the 3D printer will produce. Now let's do some analysis of this part. So uh, first we'll select a material. And we talked about this before, but the, the important thing about the material pick is that it has a reasonably close elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio to the material that you're gonna use uh, for your real component. And we're gonna interpret the stress uh, results back uh, based on the actual material properties that we expect to have by doing our own calculations. And acrylic is pretty good here in SolidWorks. If you can't find material, uh, if, you, if, you, if your CAD platform doesn't have acrylic, find one that has reasonably close value of elastic modulus and Poisson's ratio to say PLA, if that's what you're printing. Okay. So now we've set the material and we can go to simulation, create a new study, Let's do static stress analysis first. And for fixtures, this time let's use a fixed hinge. That's to emulate having some pegs or rigid shafts in these two holes. So they won't be able to translate, but they will be able to rotate. And then we'll apply a force on uh, this hole. Now we'd like it to be in a selected direction, which is that line. And let's set it to something reasonable like 100 Newtons and we're all set. Okay, that's all the information we need here to run the study. And this should go pretty quickly and we'll see we have the kind of pattern of stress that we might expect. These little uh, arms at the top are under bending, cantilever bending as we would expect leading to high stresses on the top and bottom of those surfaces. And we're getting especially high stress here because there's a stress concentrator um, in that internal coronal, even though it's rounded. But what is happening inside our 3D printed part? Maybe we wanna make sure that there isn't some sharp internal corner uh, because of the way this thing was shelled that's introducing stresses that could cause it to break. Uh, well, one way to do that, to look at that is to right click on our chart and go to mesh sectioning. And this will allow us to just drag this plane to some middle point in our component and then look inside. And it's very quick and easy to do. And we can see that oh, the stresses don't look too big in there. Now, probably if we do some mesh refinement, uh, we would get a little bit higher stresses on those internal corners, but it doesn't look like that's a dominating failure mode for us. Okay, cool. Uh, let's now go back to our model and make a change. So let's imagine that we um, used a different wall thickness. Instead of five lines, let's say we wanted to uh, try just two lines. So we're gonna make it a 0 0.8 millimeter wall thickness. And we'll also have to change the depth of this extrusion for that last face. 0.8 millimeters. If we then run this again, we'll see, okay, the walls got a lot thinner. And now we can see actually the walls are so thin that there is a gap between the wall around this hole and 
the outer wall. And that will uh, produce slightly different results in our stress analysis. So let's go back to our study, rerun it. It still won't take too long. And we can see things are a little different. It's particularly evident down here, where if we uh, look at the outer edge of the component, it's actually most deformed on the, you know, the, the top and bottom and less deformed in the middle. And that's because that's the only place where this tube through the middle touches those outer faces. And you can see for the tube, it is dipping down. It's highest at the edge and it's uh, dipping down the middle. And that's consistent with this uh, bending where you have a distributed load and supports on either end. All right, so this is looking good. That tells us a little something about how our choice of the qualitative geometry of the shell where the holes are located relative to the outer wall and what the wall thicknesses are going to be during 3D printing, how that will affect the patterns of stress and deformation experienced by our part. Now let's do a uh, analysis of buckling. So if we go back to simulation, create a new study and choose buckling, say okay. And we'll set this up exactly the same way with fixed hinges in these two holes and a force at the bottom that is along this selected direction of call it 100 Newtons. Uh, we can set this up and, and run it and see what we get. Uh, it took about 30 seconds to run. And what we're seeing for our, our uh, first mode of buckling is unsurprisingly, um, we get this negative load factor, which is saying that if the force was directed upwards instead of downwards, this whole thing could, could buckle uh, like that. And, and you know, long skinny columns under compression are most likely to buckle, uh, but we're not really interested in that because we expect this thing will be loaded in the opposite direction. So we're gonna go uh, what we're going to do is go to uh, buckling. We're going to right click, hit properties. We're going to increase the number of buckling modes to 100 and then rerun our analysis. And that'll allow us to scroll through buckling modes to find one that has a positive load factor. I'm just going to pause for a moment while that runs. All right. And this is what we see when this first uh, finishes and uh, that looks like a very strange buckling mode, uh, probably unlikely to occur. So let's go um, edit the definition of our chart. And you can see one of the things we get is we get this buckling mode number and then the corresponding load factor. Right now we're at negative 80. Let's type in one here and see what we get. So 94 and Okay, that's still a negative buckling factor, how about 95? And now we see we get something positive. Let's say, okay. And aha, this is uh, the kind of buckling factor that I was thinking we might get for this part. So because that top wall is thin and it's gonna experience some compression because the whole, the whole top, as you recall, was, was, um, was bending. So it was, it, uh, it was kind of, striking this shape where the top is under compression, the bottom part is in tension. So we have this thin face that's under compression. And what uh, this buckling mode says is that the, it may pop out. And indeed that's what we're seeing. And if we uh, look at another one, okay, that's another way of that top thin wall popping out. So this is called out of plane buckling. And it is something to keep an eye on for 3D printed parts since you tend to have these thin walls. And if there is uh, uh, bending or compression, they will, uh, so there will be some section of the material that's subject to compression and buckling as possible. So those are some quick tips as to how you can analyze 3D printed parts.